All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention, please. We will uh, stand and uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will now introduce you to Joan Madden, who will uh, take over the mic. Thank you. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those our debtors. Please do not let the devil lead us into temptation, for thou art with us from the kingdom and the power and the glory. And while we're, we have your attention, dear Lord, we ask that you place your loving arms around our country. Remove the sins that lead those to iniquity. Help those of us who wish to do the things the way you want them to be done and continue to abide with us and keep us strong. Please place your loving arms around the sick and the homeless and others who need your love and strength. These things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Um, most of you may know that I'm Deb Garland. I'm the chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. I welcome you all here today um, on the 20th anniversary. Can you hear me? Keep going, keep going. 20th anniversary. Today marks the 20th anniversary annual memorial Paul and Jean Sullivan breakfast. Unfortunately, we could not hold the in-person breakfast. But I think Paul and Jean Sullivan would love seeing us in this outdoor setting, listening to the words of hopeful Democratic candidates seeking office. And to our Democratic candidates, we, you, we wish you well in your endeavor to seek office, all of you. May I remind everyone to get out and vote on Tuesday, September 14th, 2021, our candidates in the city of Brockton need you. Thank you. Good morning. I've been asked to read a letter from Jean and Paul Sullivan's daughter to all of us. Dear Brockton Democratic City Committee members, on behalf of the family of Jean and Paul Sullivan, we continue to focus our thoughts and prayers on those families that have been affected medically, economically, and emotionally by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as on those who are on the front lines of fighting the COVID-19 virus, on those who provide resources and services in the communities, and on those who continue to fight for racial equality. On September 12th, we mark the 20th year of the Memorial Breakfast first named for Jean Sullivan and renamed the Jean and Paul Sullivan Breakfast in 2018 in memoriam of two people's lives and their works dedicated to defending democracy for all and promoting democratic val values which support all people. They were a part of the city of Brockton community for over 50 years and are so very proud to call it home. This year, as in the past year, we are still under the shadow of the COVID-19 virus and the multiple variants along with it. Through the miracle of science, vaccinations have been developed to fight the virus, which has allowed us to return to some type of normalcy. Mask wearing and social distancing to protect all the people are a part of our lives for now. Along with this has come many disturbing realities, most of all the immense divisiveness that has taken over our democratic society. While well, a divided society is not new, the presentation of ideas and policies have opponents and proponents. This is democratic. However, the way we work through these differences is important. In a democratic society, we hold certain freedoms freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to bear arms, etc. With these freedoms come great responsibility. It is up to us as Democrats to not only fight for the continuation of these freedoms, but to demand the responsible dissemination of information and hold others' actions accountable to the same. 
Although the COVID-19 pandemic has prevented us from again physically gathering, we can continue to show our unity as a party by supporting those candidates with our democratic ideals and by supporting the next generation who will continue to promote the party values. Thank you for all of the kindness you have always shown, Jean and Paul Sullivan. Warmly, Paula Sullivan Bonazzoli, daughter of Paul Red Sullivan and Jean Sullivan. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Thomasy. I'm the vice chair of the Democratic City Committee uh, Scholarship Committee. So um, each year at the Sullivan Breakfast, um, we are uh, excited and privileged to be able to give a $1,000 scholarship to a uh, Brockton student who is uh, in or entering college. And so today, uh, it's my uh, privilege to be able to award the uh, scholarship to um, a graduate of Brockton High School who is currently attending Dean College in Franklin, Massachusetts, where she is a student in biology. So uh, without further ado, I'd like Adriana Gabo to come up and get the check. Oh, hello. Thank you so much. Did you want to say anything? Oh, yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm beyond honored to receive a scholarship. Um, I have a lot of dreams and aspirations in life, and most definitely biology and becoming a dermatologist has been one of them. And winning the scholarship is definitely going to have a lot to receive my dreams and actually accomplish it. Um, I am a graduate from Bronson High School. I was in the yellow building. Of 2021, and um, thankfully, uh, now that COVID is over, I was managed to be able to enter into Dean College to start my freshman year, and then graduate my four year, and then enter into a medical school to become a dermatologist. So, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you again at the end before you. Um, the last thing I'd like to mention. Uh, <laughs> The last thing I'd like to mention is that these are $1,000 scholarships that we send out. We usually raise the money through the Sullivan Breakfast, which is our primary fundraiser for the year. So I just want to appeal to anybody who's here or anybody who's watching that if you could contribute um, to the scholarship during the course of the year, we, oh, we would be um, very... Uh, grateful for that so that we'll be able to do this um, fiscally responsibly next year. Thank you very much. Hello again. And uh, for you all that do not know me, my name is Jimmy Pereira, first vice president of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. And at this time, we will now introduce our candidates, starting with Mayor Robert Sullivan. <laughs> Well, first of all, good morning, everybody. I want to uh, give another round of applause for our scholarship recipient, Ms. Gabol. So many of you know me. I'm Bob Sullivan, and it's an honor and privilege to be here today as the uh, 50th mayor of the city of Brockton. Brockton is my home. It's your home. It's our home, right? And we need to make sure that we continue to have a vibrant home, an economically feasible, wonderful, thriving home, but also a safe home, right? COVID is not gone. And so during my time, when I took that oath on June, June, uh, January 6th of 2020, COVID was in Italy at that time. It wasn't even on the West Coast, but we knew that it was coming here. So we took proactive steps, created a, a health equity task force and a wellness trust team and making sure that we could community partners could collaborate. To this day, every single Wednesday, we still have our calls and Senator Brady's on that call and it's with the hospitals and I have weekly call with the pastors. But I wanna just say right now, I'm running for re-election because Brockton needs to continue down that path for success. I applaud each and every one of the candidates here. It's a daunting task, but I, yes. But I also know that we need to continue to make sure that Brockton is thriving. We need to have Brockton marketed in a different manner, which we're doing right now. But I also want to just address a couple different things that have come up lately, falsehoods. Sullivan only cares about Ward 1. I grew up in Ward 2, 
I voted here. This is the first place I ever voted. My mom and dad over there live in Ward 2. My in-laws live in Ward 4. I, I, I have been elected seven times over 14 years as a councilor at large to serve the entire city. Seven wards, 28 precincts. I do it because I love Brockton, every aspect of the city of Brockton. When I ran for mayor, and I want to thank Jimmy and Gene, we had great, great, great dialogue, and it was great. But now that I serve as the mayor, it's an honor and privilege, but I can only be a good mayor by being an effective leader, which is to listen and learn, to listen and learn. And one thing that I can say right now, and you all know me, what, what, what is the most important thing in my life is my family, right? And ethics and morals and compass. So another misnomer is no one wants to work for Sullivan. They're all jumping ship at City Hall. Well, that's not true. First of all, when people want to leave the city of Brockton, I meet with them and I applaud them and I said, you need a recommendation. If you're seeking a, a, a professional uh, a enrichment in life, go for it, right? Go for it. But fact is, is my new chief of staff, Sidney Merrill, who's back there, she started four weeks ago, four weeks ago. She left the comfort of Bridgewater State for over a, a decade to come to the city of champions because she knows how important Brockton is. But Brockton can only thrive if we work together. We're better together. Collaboration is key, but also thinking outside the box. When I became mayor before COVID, I came in here and took a tour of the War Memorial, this beautiful building that honors the people that paid the ultimate sacrifice, that served our nation, served our nation well and admirably. And upstairs, there was a locked door, and I said, let's open the door. It's a museum. It's, it's a beautiful museum. So I asked the trustees, let, let's make sure that that can be open to the general public. More importantly, the boys and girls from Brockton Public Schools and Cardinal Spellman, Southeastern Regional, come in, listen and learn about what this building means and the men and women that sacrificed to have this building. So it's, it's doing the little things that add up. And I've said this as a councilor at large, and I say it as a mayor, perception's reality. Right? Pat Quinn is here. He used to always talk, talk, talk about the broken windows theory. That's a truth. That's a truth. So having a clean, clean, clean city, right? Perception's reality. So I, I, I ask the DPW every single day, get the street sweepers out. We have to clean. We have to clean. But we also have to be compassionate. People are saying the, the folks that are facing homelessness, no one wants to be homeless. We all grew up with the uh, principle of a roof over our head, but there's variables, there's reasons why people are homeless. Uh, alcohol, drug abuse, mental health, foreclosure epidemic, that's why people are out there. So what I said when, when I took office is I met with John Yazinski from Father Bill's Mainspring. I wanna learn, I wanna listen, I wanna see what wraparound services we can do. But also, John, what can I do to be a partner with you? You know what he said? On Manly Street, there's vacant property that abuts the VA hospital. The government owns it. They're going to auction it. Will you support me? My first thought was, well, I'm the mayor of Brockton. Let me support Brockton. Maybe we could put a DPW there, right? But McKenty Vento is this law that says homeless uh, endeavors and services trump the municipality. So I said, John, I'm with you, right? And, and our state delegation, Claire Crona, Jerry Cassie, Michelle Dubois, Senator Mike Brady supported it. Our fine Congressman Stephen Lynch supported it. You know what's going to happen? Father Bill's Mainspring is going to relocate to a campus setting with wraparound services. In the city of Brockton, I have a handshake agreement. We're going to reacquire that building. So we're going to be able to retrofit that. We're going to clean up that area. We're going to utilize Perkins Park. These are the things. But the first thing I need to do is make sure that we stay the course and deal with this Delta variant. Okay? Over 430 people have perished here in the city of Brockton. We'll never forget those folks. But as mayor and as a dad of three kids, Health and safety is paramount. So what I just want to say right now is I'm asking you humbly for your support on Tuesday. I'm three on the ballot, and I've said this many times and I mean it. I'm number one for Brockton at all times. There's no ifs, ands, or buts on that. I wish you all good luck on Tuesday. God bless. Stay safe. Thank you, Brockton Democratic City Committee. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Joni. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hello again. I uh, wanted to uh, say hello to our elected officials that are here as well. Yeah, I'm a little bit tall. <laughs> uh, we have uh, registered these John Buckley. Uh, elected official Susanna Castro is also a candidate as well. Might as well give a ring to those that are elected. Um, see anybody else? Rita Mendez as well, can uh, counsel at large, also a candidate. Uh, uh, Councilor at Large, uh, Wynn Farwell. 
right, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, of course, Mayor Robert Sullivan, uh, who just left the stage. And if I'm not mistaken, that's about it. Uh, at this moment, we will have uh, candidates that are running for council at large uh, come up. Uh, if we could have uh, Councilor Winfaro. Also, uh, candidates have three minutes. So if you hear a noise or if you hear me say time, that is the time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, my very best wishes to all of the candidates. We campaign not against each other. We campaign for the city of Brockton. I've been blessed to hold every elected position in the city, 10 years on the school committee, four years as mayor, and since January of 2016, I've been a councilor at large. This year, I'm honored to serve as council president. So I actually have a job on the council. This is not a ceremonial position. I've always adopted the philosophy that Let's move Brockton forward. Let's pick and choose the areas where we need to modernize our approach to how we govern and how we handle city government. I wrote the ordinance that establishes minimum professional qualifications for the city solicitor. I wrote the ordinance that establishes minimum professional qualifications for the human resources director. I wrote the order that requires that we post all of our vendor payments that we make on our city website. If you go to the auditor's website, and you click on open government, you will see all of the different vendor payments that are made. Transparency, where do we spend the money, where does it go, and for what purpose. I also uh, wrote uh, an order that mandates that all city employment positions be publicized, not just on the city website, but in other areas. Uh, we need to broaden our approach to recruitment, diversify the city workforce. So where do we go from here? So my agenda, if I'm privileged and honored to be reelected, is about four or five different issues. Number one, first class schools, programs, services, and facilities where we know our children will get the best education. Number two, safe neighborhoods, quiet neighborhoods where people aren't disturbed by fireworks, by loud parties. Your home should be your refuge. You should be able to enjoy it. Number three, we should have community policing, neighborhood crime watch, and traffic enforcement in all neighborhoods. Number four, we need a clean, environmentally safe city. As the mayor mentioned, we need to clean our streets, address our infrastructure issues, and keep our environment clean in this city to make it attractive to others. And finally, we need true economic development, not just housing. Housing is a component of economic development. We need to attract new businesses. We need to give people an opportunity to work. Maybe it's an emerging technology from the pandemic. Maybe it's a professional service that could be offered in the city. There is much to do. I sincerely ask for your support on September 14th in the preliminary election, and it really is an honor to serve you. It is a job. I enjoy it. And God bless all of you. We are all part of Brockton, and we all can make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Farwa. Uh, next, we will have Councilor Large Rita Mendez. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for all of you who are here today. This is a very, very different event than when we started planning for the Solomon Breakfast. I was really looking forward to be among my fellow Democrats. Um, since last year, we had to do a virtual. Now this year, we're doing very different. It gives us a message that, unfortunately, we're still dealing with COVID. So we are all together as a city with the mayor in collaboration with the uh, Board of Health, trying to get as all of our residents vaccinated. So that way, hopefully next year we'll be back together. So I'm Rita Mendez and I am running for re-election as council at large in this city. As you remember me, I first ran in 2019 in this beautiful welcoming city. And um, I got elected to serve in 2020 and we all were faced with that global pandemic. So there's still a lot of work to be done in the city of Brockton. I've been out there door knocking, speaking with residents and they're speaking up and they're telling us what needs to be done what it's infrastructure, what it's all the different speed ins and all the different issues in the city. So I ask that you once again support me on my re-election 
and I promise you that I will be working as diligent as possible for the city, and I will be um, working with uh, democratic values because I really love this party because it's a welcoming party. I am uh, originally from Brazil. I came to this country sp without speaking any English, and I was able to go to school. I was able to become an attorney, and I want to now give it back and pay it back to my city, work hard for my city, and really um, work with the city, with this amazing party that really welcomed me in, brought me in, and I look forward to continue to serve the city, serve um, Brockton. You know my number, you can call me, get a hold of me, and I ask for your support Tuesday, and hopefully if I go to the finals uh, once again in November. Thank you, thank you so much for listening. All right, at this moment, we will have a uh, candidate for Council at Large, Julio Pomar, come to the podium. Good morning, everybody. My name is Julio Pomar. I'm running for City Council at Large here in the city of Brockton. Uh, today's a special day in my mind. Uh, today's the 12th of September. 20 years ago today, this country was unified more than it's ever been because of the tragedy that happened the day before. Some people had woken up, missed part of their families. Firefighters woken up, fa firefighter families who never, parents who never came home, same with police officers and other uh, first responders. So today is a day that I like to think of. I would wish it would be like that uh, every September 12th. So I'm running for city council here at large because I love this city. I love Brockton. I love everything about it. I grew up here. I came here when I was five years old from South America, my family. This is my home. This is where I choose to be. Uh, I can't think of any other place I want to be. I want to make this city better. I want to do everything I can to make a city better. Uh, I have an extensive um, public safety background working with the fire department. I'm still an active duty paramedic. I work uh, for a local hospital taking care of people. Uh, take care of a lot of sick people at home. Uh, try to make them feel better. Keep them out of the hospital. Uh, majority of the patients that I do are COVID positive patients. So I'm just going to say really quickly, if you haven't been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. It is the most important thing you can do for yourself and for your family and even for the people you don't know so they don't get whatever you have if you do have COVID or even if you don't. And those of you, you've heard about people who say, yeah, I, have, I took the vaccination, but I still get sick. The patients that are taking the vaccination and are coming down with, the, with COVID, they're having a lighter course than the ones who've never been vaccinated before. The ones that have, been, that have never been vaccinated before who do get the COVID, uh, they were a lot sicker than the ones that did get uh, the vaccine. So I just want to pass that on. Uh, big things with me here in the city is number one, education. Uh, my, my daughter, uh, excuse me, my uh, daughter graduated from Valley Victoria and Brockton High last year. This is a great school, great school system. I want to keep that going. Public safety, we need new fire stations. I would like to join the fire stations and the police stations together. I agree with uh, Mayor Farwell that we, I'm sorry, with uh, Wynn Farwell that we have to go out and get the people, the police in, out, in the, out in the community so they can be trusted and people can trust them and that's how we're going to get the police and uh, have a better, uh, have a better, um, excuse me, words escape me, uh, have, a, have a better, uh, I'm going to pass on that, <clears throat> go on to something else. This city is bleeding. Over the last couple of weeks, you've had people killed, kids killed. I'm going to ask you that it's not, and say that it's not up to the police to keep our kids safe when parents don't know where they are. Keep track of your kids. Make sure they're home when they're supposed to. Don't let your kids stay out too late. You know that. We all have to take responsibility for our children. I'm a father. I'm a father of six kids, and um, I've always taken care of them. I'm going to ask you to do the same, take care of the same. The future of Brockton is our children. Let's keep our children together and keep them safe. Thank you very much. Next, we will have a uh, candidate for Council at Large, Gary Keith Sr. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming out this morning. My name is Gary Keith Sr and I'm running for city council at large. As most of you know, this is not my first time at running for uh, this seat for at large. I've been consistent, uh, consistently running for at large. I never flip-flopped. 
for another office, um, I state the course of trying to serve you in that capacity. At the same time, my logo is Experience Matters. And when I say that, I've gained that experience by serving you on the planning board and the zoning board for four years each. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, and uh, so I gained, that, I gained that experience. But even after I lost in some of the past elections, I've always went right out the next day after the election, I continued to serve the residents and the businesses, um, the businesses of uh, Brockton, because that's the job. With or without the title, your job is to serve. Just like the city councilors have to make tough decisions and sometimes unpopular, sitting on the planning board and the zoning board, we had to do the same thing. We made some unpopular um, votes that we had to make, and I was not afraid to make those votes. And when I say that, we're talking about the power plant, we're talking about the, uh, the desal water plant. I was not afraid to do that. I will not be afraid to make the vote that benefits Brockton if I'm elected as your next city council at large. So I say that, and I'm asking you again for your vote because experience does matter. And the thing is, is that everyone here deserves to win. I applaud every candidate that's running for office. However, what sets me apart from them is the fact that I have been out here since 2013 when I first ran. I've sat on the planning board, I reiterate that, I sat on the planning board and the zoning board, which are two very extreme boards here in the city of Brockton. That gives me experience over a lot of the other candidates that are running. Not that they don't deserve the seat, but like I said, we need to get this city up and running. We need to follow suit, we need to actually serve this, the people of Brockton. On that note, I will be a full-time counselor because I'm a retired person at this time, uh, um, right now. I retired last year. So I will be serving Brockton 24 seven. I'm accessible and I will be transparent. I have this thing that says, the more that they know, the more people will do, okay? And or when they know more, they'll do more. The thing is, is that we need to allow the citizens in, of Brockton to know exactly what's going on in our government, not after the fact, but before the fact and while it's going on. That's one of the reasons why we do hear some complaints. We need to answer our phones as city councilors. So, like I said, I think that my position of being retired will benefit the position of city, as me being a city councilor at large. So on September 14th, which is Tuesday, I am asking you to vote for me, Gary Q. Sr., for your next city councilor at large. I will be the fourth name on the ballot and again, experience does matter. Thank you. All right, next we will have a candidate for council at large, Gene Bradley Derencourt. Uh, good morning, folks. How are you guys doing? Uh, I am so happy to be here. You wouldn't believe it because uh, last year has been so crazy. If somebody told me that, um, I would have an opportunity to come back um, in a place like this, I mean, especially in 2021, to speak about anything, I wouldn't believe it. But here we are, right? So as American, as responsible people, we take the right action that allows us to not only trying our best to minimize the impact of COVID-19, but also to do what is necessary to prevent people from dying. So in the spirit of this, I would encourage everyone to take the vaccine because that's important. So let's face it, my presence behind this this morning is one thing, is to let everyone know that I love this city more than you can possibly imagine. For more than a decade, I've been living here since day one, I've been proving that I believe in this city, I believe in the people, and I appreciate the opportunity that I have to serve here. I was a city council before, and I hope to be elected again. And I'll tell you why. In the spirit of having a city like Brockton, where we have so many young people, it's important to have an opportunity for them not only to see, but also to know that they can be part of it. And so far, you, the citizen of Brockton, have been giving me this opportunity to serve. I said it. Not today, not yesterday, but since day one, have been doing my best to represent Brockton accordingly. The mayor said we have to put Brockton in a positive path. That's what I've been doing. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, no matter where I am, 
I will always do my best to represent Brockton accordingly. So it's important for folks to understand what I did on the council. Those of you who serve with me, you knew what I did. Those of you who know me, you know where I stand. I have a backbone. I don't flip flop and I don't change. When I say something, I stand before it. You know why? Because I live in Brockton. In the city of Brockton, you know what we do? We fight hard, but we fight for the right reason. And as a Democrat, I couldn't be more hopeful than seeing all of you guys taking the time to run for office. I say it all the time. Unless you've been there and done it, trust me, it is not an easy path. And I encourage, if not applaud, everyone who take that responsibility. So this morning, in the spirit of togetherness, in the spirit of hopefulness, I ask you on Tuesday, September 14th, for your vote. A vote for me is a vote to improve the situation in Brockton by investing more in education, more in public safety, more in youth empowerment, and more at the Brockton Public Library where I learn English. I know some of you know me well, and you know that I don't change just for the sake of changing. But guess what? I am not 29 years ago. I'm not 29, 29 anymore. I'm 31 right now. When you know better, you do better. And that's what we will do. And so far, I guess, because of you, that's why I am here. I say it all the time. When people look at Brockton, look at us. We are one of the most diverse places in Massachusetts. Not because we are, how do I put this? Not because um, we want to be number one, but because we are number one. We got people from all over the world, across lines, and doing all kind of work because we love this place. So folks, on September 14th, I ask you for one of your four votes to go back to the Brockton City Council. And November 2nd, and I ask you again for your vote. Thank you. I love you all. <laughs> uh, coming to the podium, candidate for council at large, Jamal Brathwaite. Hello, everybody. My name is Jamal Brathwaite. Thank you so much for coming out today. It's a pleasure to, it's a pleasure to see everyone. On Tuesday, September 14th, I'm asking for your vote. And the reason why is because I want to work with the city council to promote an agenda that is going to increase the quality of life for residents here in the city of Brockton. Attributes of that agenda would include the following. Number one is we need a citywide infrastructure plan to improve our roads. Brockton roads are like the Flintstones. And right now, when they get improved, they get improved on a piecemeal basis. We need a citywide plan that is going to incorporate how we're going to identify, how we're going to improve all roadways in Brockton. Number two is that we need a citywide plan to improve our water main pipes. Recently, the, in the city of Brockton, it was identified that we had an EPA threshold violation that pertained to the water quality safety, drinking water quality safety. And for that reason, Improving the root cause of that, by the way, was due to the quality condition of our water main pipes. And for that reason, this should be a top priority as part of a collective agenda agreed by the city council. Therefore, that's what I'm going to be fighting for. Thirdly, is that I'm a strong advocate for great education. And for that reason, I'm going to fight tooth and nail so that there is a Brockton High School infrastructure plan that is documented and ready for implementation by the time I leave office in two, after two years of service. The uh, next attribute of this plan is that we need to fill all the vacancies in City Hall. Currently in, city, in the city of Brockton, we have over 10 vacancies. And what's most concerning is that at least the core management vacancies, the city auditor, the head of HR recruitment, uh, the city clerk roles, it's not even advertised to the public. The city auditor role, it's been vacant for over 15 months at a time when the city of Brockton went through the highest unemployment in our nation's history. So it should have been the easiest time to source talent to get our city government running on all cylinders. The fifth attribute of the plan is to promote a business environment for business to flourish in Brockton. One of the attributes of that plan is that we have over 400 derelict and abandoned properties in the city of Brockton. A list should exist on the city of Brockton website that lists these properties and what is the status for their resolution to make them a, a productive asset here in the city of Brockton that is taxable and 
In order to do that, so that's one component. Another component is improving customer service in City Hall. The moment that list is available on the Brockton Building website, we're going to have a large people, a large number of people from the public who want to learn more. A lot of them are going to be investors who want to invest millions in the city of Brockton, but we'll never know if we don't advertise those uh, 400 derelict properties on our city website. Overall, we need better management in the city of Brockton, so I'm asking for your vote. I've got experience as an accountant, as a compliance officer, as an internal auditor for the past 17 years for the largest financial institutions in the United States and the United Kingdom. Brockton needs better management. I'm asking for your vote Tuesday, September 14th. If you'd like to learn more about me, visit my, my website, voteforjamal.com. Call me. My number is 774-428-1525. Thank you so much, and everyone, have a blessed day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we will be moving on to the ward candidates. Uh, we will start with Ward 4, Suzanne DeCastro. Please come to the podium. Councilor Suzanne DeCastro. Good morning. My name is Susan DeCastro. I serve Ward 4 as its city councilor. I want to thank the Brockton Democratic City Committee and most especially Chairperson Deb Garland and Ward 7 Chair Patrick Quinn for their hard work in making this breakfastless event happened today. They have shown their, their dedication to democratic values by working so hard so that all these democratic candidates can speak to you today. You know, it's fitting that this event is being held in front of the Brockton War Memorial Building. This building was dedicated in 1930 to the memory of the Brockton residents who have served in all American wars. Yesterday we were we remembered the victims, the brave first responders, and the members of the armed forces who fought as a result of the bombings of the World Trade Center 20 years ago. I can't compare their public service to the public service of elected officials here in Brockton, but it is nonetheless public service. So let me tell you a, minute, a moment about mine. On November 2nd, I'm running for re-election as Brockton, Brockton Ward 4 City Councilor. My goal continues to be to use my talents and experience for positive change in Ward 4 and the City of Brockton so that we provide a good quality of life for all residents. I want Brockton to be a community of great opportunity that attracts our children, yours and mine, to come back to raise their own children here. This is only my fourth year serving as Ward 4 Counselor. I've accomplished plenty and I, I really love the job and I have so much more to do. You know, being a ward counselor is not a glamorous job. To date, I've received and responded to more than 500 uh, telephone calls, emails, messages on social media from residents, businesses, and even residents of other wards who knew that I would help them. And they come in about all kinds of issues and concerns, such as roads and streets, from signage to lighting to potholes to parking to paving and of course speeding. We're seeing a lot of cars speeding by here right now. Criminal activity, food insecurity, housing insecurity, and homelessness. Odors, pollution, and trash. Noise and neighborhood issues. Auto repair businesses working all hours and leaving cars everywhere. Fees, taxes, and city spending. Economic development and navigating city, city hall. You know, the best part of my public service is the people. Many great people live in Ward 4, and it's my honor to get to know them by listening to them and helping them with their concerns. Among my city council successes are voting against raising water and sewer charges last year to protect our residents from added costs as the COVID-19 pandemic was bearing down on us, creating the city council's committee on equity, diversity, and inclusion, serving as Brockton's representative on the Plymouth County Advisory Board, which approves the county budget. I've been monitoring the county's administration of the federal CARES Act funds, of which $18 million are earmarked for Brockton, and uh, for, to, to reimburse us for COVID-related expenses. I'll also be monitoring how the American Rescue Plan funds are spent by the county. I hold public meetings in Ward 4. 
I show up and listen at other meetings of boards and commissions. I, I go to cultural events and city, city meetings. I want to know everything I can to help Ward 4 and the city of Brockton. I've had a wonderful success that just kind of came together in the last few weeks. Working with the Brockton Housing Authority, the DPW, and Old Colony Planning, I've arranged for the installation of a crosswalk with those bells and whistles, blinking lights, to enable residents of Campello High Rise to get across the street safely uh, to, to, to get social services at the Trinity Baptist Church. In the past, Ward 4 has been known by, as the dumping ground of the city. We're the home to a landfill, a wastewater treatment plant, a 24-7 junkyard, and over 70 licensed auto repair shops. No longer under my watch. So this is really a job interview for, for who you think should run your half a billion dollar business. I'm Susan Nicastro. I'm seeking re-election as Ward 4 City Councilor. I'd appreciate your vote on November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Susanna Castro. Next, we will have a uh, candidate for Ward 6, John Troxell. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is John Troxell, a lifelong resident of Ward 6. Raised my family there, a former licensed realtor, also a musician. I'm president of the Bat Bus Drivers Union, a driver for 23 years. As union president, <clears throat> I fight for my members on a daily basis. Even though the union and management don't always agree, we find a solution that works for both sides. I would like to use this skill set to fight for the residents of Ward 6 and work with my fellow counselors to get things accomplished. Driving the streets of Brockton, I understand the issues the city faces and see them firsthand. I want the residents of Ward 6 to have a voice I feel they currently don't have by committing to regular ward slash neighborhood watch meetings addressing these issues. Understanding we're in the midst of a pandemic but can still hold these meetings via Zoom. I'm for transparency, holding people accountable, making the ward a safer place, family friendly place for people to live. All things I feel the current counselor has fallen short of doing. I'm looking to give a voice to the residents who feel they haven't had the opportunity to be heard. Strive to make improvements to the ward that will only help keep the area a better place to live, repairs to our crum crumbling infrastructure, roads and, and, um, and pipes, push for enforcement uh, of things like speed and health code violations, uh, concerns for things like crosswalks and signage, stop signs, more digital speed signs to make drivers aware of how fast they're actually driving, uh, a forum for people to air issues and complaints, as well as a place to give ideas and opinions of what we as a community want to rectify some of these glaring issues. Um, at, at the same time, uh, the meetings update the residents as to what's going on in the ward uh, and, and, and let them know of things that are to come, such as businesses and development of housing. Something that can take place before it's too late to, for people to have a say. I've conducted myself my entire life, treating everyone, no matter what race, color, creed, the same. As a musician, um, I pride myself on playing different styles of music from uh, diverse backgrounds, from rock to reggae, blues, even Cape Verdean music. Uh, as a union president, I represent everyone equally and fight for workers' rights, no matter what race, gender, color, or creed. I would continue this fight uh, as an elected official, the same as I do as union president. I was raised by my family with this mindset, as well as raised my kids with this mindset. As a union, we are taught all, that we are all brothers and sisters. And I look at the residents of Brockton the exact same way. Uh, we all have different backgrounds, level of income, but at the end of the day, we have all the same wants, needs, and to be treated fairly. Raise our family in a safe environment, make a living wage to support our family, this is the mindset I bring to the City Council, if given the honor to represent you. Thank you for your time, and hopefully consider me with your vote this coming Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, candidate uh, John Chalk. So at this moment, we will now bring up uh, Ward 2 candidate uh, Jamie Hodges.
I want to first by starting off by saying my name is Jamie Hodges and I'm running for Ward 2 City Councilor here in the City of Champions. Um, throughout my life I attended Brockton Public Schools. I am a 2012 graduate from this Brockton's very own Brockton High School. Right. After completing my high school career I attained my bachelor's degree from Regis College in Business Management. Um, just past year, even during the pandemic, I received my master's degree in um, HR management. <laughs> Currently, I work full time for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, I have three plans that I plan um, to accomplish as running for Ward 2 City Councilor. The first one is improving our public safety. That's our public safety as our community as a whole. You want to make sure you feel safe in your neighborhoods and that when you call the police, they show up and they're going to come and assist you. My second plan is to support our small businesses. My parents are owners of small businesses. Many members of the community own small businesses. We have to make sure we don't forget them. We have to support them no matter what. I also want to expand and deepen community engagement. As Councilor Farewell said, um, bridging that gap between law enforcement and the community. Have the police, community police, and come out, meet the kids, interact with them, let them know it's okay. The, pol the police aren't going to hurt them. I'm running for Ward 2 City Council for my community. I'm ready to provide unity, innovation, and transformation amongst the Ward 2 community. I want to hear firsthand from my constituents their concerns and work together in unity with other councilors to work on improving our community, one step at a time. By becoming Ward 2 City Council, I will continue to represent your views and to be the voice on the City Council. I want to be one of the decision makers who works alongside other councilors to address all city issues carefully and to make the best decision for Ward 2. By doing this, I can ensure it not only aligns with your values, but it supports the vision that you have for your future of your family, your business, and yourself. Right. My professional career has provided me with the skills and insights that, it will be, that I believe will be useful on City Council. I conduct myself with integrity and commitment, and I tend to be true to those values and all that I do for Ward 2. On Tuesday, I'm number three on the ballot. Um, so I'm asking for your vote to vote for me, Jamie Hodges. As they say, they save the best for last. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now, uh, at this time, we'll have Ward 6 candidate Elizabeth Lasso uh, to the stage, please. Podium. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Lasso. I'm running for Ward 6 City Council. And if what Jamie said was true, I guess they did save the best for last. This is my first time running for a city council position, but it's not the first time that I've been working and advocating for the people in my ward. I have been uh, the vice president of the Northeast Brockton Neighborhood Association for the past two years, uh, where I help advocate for my neighbors and, and I'm contacting uh, people at City Hall in an effort to help them with their issues and have resolved many of the issues that they have. Um, I've been participating in uh, every City Council meeting by observing the agendas for the past year and a half. Um, I have participated at a City Council meeting uh, for the budget where I asked several questions about the transparency and legitimacy of the items that were listed and you know things about not having a, a good infrastructure plan in place. Um, I asked more questions than our current rep did. So I feel like I was representing my ward and the city by standing up. I was one of seven people out of 105,000 people that are in Brockton to come out to try to be helpful. Um, I've also participated in many zoning board and planning board meetings as an advocate for my neighborhood. And I've seen the difficulties that people have navigating through these meetings uh, and businesses trying to get started in Brockton. I see them met with a lot of resistance. I, I don't believe that there are enough uh, resources within the city to help people uh, get businesses started in Brockton. We need to have more businesses in Brockton so that we can offset the incredible tax rate that we have to pay right now. And it's not just the tax rate, it's the water rate. Monies are being spent in, in ways that I don't feel are in the best plan for the people of Brockton. We need to take a look at that. We need to get our act together and we need to have a group of people who will work together in with the mayor so that we can come up with better plans so that we can move Brockton forward in a better light. I've been out there talking to all the people for the past several months and 
most of their concerns are with the things that I was just speaking of, the infrastructure program. People are not happy that their streets are looking terrible. We have this great plan to redo the downtown Brockton area, which I think is wonderful because it could be a place that is a destination. But you need to get to that destination. And like I say, all roads lead to Brockton. But how many people are going to want to travel down these intricated roads and, and go to that destination place if their car could potentially be damaged on the way to there? We need a real plan. We need to do better with the spending of our money. There's a lot of waste going on that we need to address and take care of. And together with the board, I would like to be able to do that. There are ways to improve Brockton. And the first step is to elect a representative who wants to do the work, not for political reasons, but it's because of the right thing to do. I plan on being that representative, not just for Ward 6, but for all of Brockton. I've been very reachable during this whole campaign. If you need to get in touch with me, you can go to my website. Uh, you can access it through my Elizabeth Lasso Facebook account. Um, my phone number is 617-777-6611. I'm number one on the ballot. And I do need your vote on September 14th to be able to advance to the November election. And I would appreciate your vote on Tuesday. Thank you very much. All right, now before we conclude our event, we have a special guest, uh, candidate for governor, uh, Deborah Allen. Um, Danielle. Danielle, Deborah, I know, I'm looking at Deb. Um, and uh, before De uh, uh, Madam Allen comes up, I want to say thank you to all the candidates. Uh, I know it's not an easy task to come up and stand in front of the podiums when the jitterbugs come out. So, uh, again, congratulations on coming up, doing a great job. and. Best of luck to you on uh, Tuesday, September 14th. Good morning. Good morning, Brockton Dems, Brockton City Committee. It's terrific to see you having found a solution to our hard challenges, how to gather in times of COVID, be in person and also on Zoom. And terrific to be here to celebrate the Sullivans this morning for your Sullivan breakfast. I want to thank Chair Garland Thank you to the mayor, Mayor Sullivan as well, for helping us all gather. I'm Danielle Allen, candidate for governor. Some of you know me already. I'm a mom, nonprofit leader, policy innovator, professor at Harvard. I've had the pleasure and privilege over the last 20 years of leading organizations at all scales, from small startups to a $6 billion philanthropy. The much, much more important thing about me, though, is I am from a huge family. We've experienced the full range of challenge as well as opportunity. Issues of homelessness, addiction, incarceration. I have wrestled through all of those things directly with family members. We really believe in linking arms, connecting in order to empower, try to put the floor back under and take everybody forward together. That's the spirit we need right now in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's the spirit we need. The pandemic just showed us plain as day how different impacts are for different communities in our commonwealth. Everybody deserved protection when it hit, not everybody got it, but people jumped in. The Brockton Together Fund, you jumped in. I jumped in, pulled together a big network of people to advocate for a real ramp up of public investment in testing and contact tracing. The Boston COVID Coalition jumped in in order to get vaccines into people's arms, Black Boston COVID Coalition. It was people working together that made the difference when our state government was failing us. And now, going forward, we need transformation. This is the moment for transformation. We have to link arms, reimagine ourselves as one commonwealth, and knit communities together across our commonwealth by building public commitment to work hard and invest in basic building blocks, housing, transportation, schools, good jobs, and justice. And we have to work on those building block pieces as a set because that's how we will transition to a renewable energy economy. And climate change is the looming threat that on top of everything else makes it all so much worse. It's leadership work to link arms and bring this transformation together. That's what we're working on at Team Allen for MA. And we invite you to join us. You can learn more at our website, allenforma.com. We're looking forward to the Democratic Party Convention on the 25th. We've advocated for some of the housing planks in the platform. Looking forward to working with all of you on making that a reality. So please 
come join us. Congratulations again on all the good work you do in your community on behalf of your community. It is an honor to be with you. Thank you. All right, now thank you again for everyone coming out. At this time, I will uh, bring uh, President of uh, Brockton Democratic City Committee, uh, Deborah Garland, uh, to the podium for closing. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the shorty. <laughs> At this time, I'd like all of my ward chairs that are currently here with us to please come up. Steve, Patrick, John, and you, <laughs> and John, and Joni. Joni, yeah. Step on in. Steve, come on in. Please come on in. Space is all. Come on. Come on, my Good lady. Family here. Who else we got? We got our Joni. <laughs> I just want to take a moment to thank publicly all of my ward chairs because without them we would not have a Brockton Democratic City Committee. Through all this pandemic for the last 18, 19 months, we have met every month and we've made decisions that we felt were best for the public and for our city committee and our Democratic Party. I do want to say thank you to you all. Also, I'd like to thank all our candidates for coming today because without you, we wouldn't have a job. Uh, you all did a wonderful job and I hope on Tuesday we get the vote out and you all uh, get through to the next, if you have uh, someone running against you, I hope you get through. Um, on the vaccine front, I would like to say please, please, please encourage as leaders in the community, we need to encourage people to get vaccinated because without us getting vaccinated, we will continue to be, our numbers will continue to be up. I'd like to thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the day for your Sunday. And we'll see you on Tuesday. I hope to be around. Thank you so much. Be sure to vote. Yeah. Get out and vote. 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 Thank you. Thank you, guys. Y'all ready? Oh, yeah. We got everybody? Yeah. Cheese. Cheese. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Well done. Well done, everybody. Well done. 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 Well done.